Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm Hannah Martin from Talent Ladies Club um, and today's guest expert is Ekaterina. Now Ekaterina is Partnership Manager at leading premium virtual assistant company Worldwide 101. Hello Ekaterina. Hi Hannah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us. So Ekaterina is going to share um, some information on how to become a successful VA. So she's going to talk about the kind of things that you need to consider when setting yourself up and give you lots of tips. So I am just going to pass over to Ekaterina. I'm going to make you presenter now. Um, and I'm going to turn my camera off um, and let you start. And if you have any questions for Ekaterina, please do feel free to ask throughout the presentation and we'll answer them for you at the end. So um, it's got an amazing opportunity of getting, having her here. She's so knowledgeable about being a VA. So if you have any questions, please do ask. Perfect. Hannah, thank you so, so much. And hello, everybody. I'm really, really excited to, to be here today and to tell you a little bit more about how to become a successful virtual assistant. So what I will do now is I'll turn off my webcam and I will share the screen with you so that you can see the full presentation. And then, as Hannah said, please ask away throughout the webinar. I will be sure to answer all of your questions at the end. So without further ado, here we go. Hi, Katarina. I, we can see your screen if you're wondering. Oh, you can. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Let me make it full screen. Here we go. So hopefully everybody can see the screen now and you're all live on the presentation. Brilliant. Hannah, I'm not hearing from you, so I'm guessing that it's all working perfectly. It's all so, fine. Okay, brilliant. So without further ado, let's get started and let's talk today about the path to becoming a successful virtual assistant. So first of all, why, why have you all come to join us today? Um, maybe it's because you're stuck in a 9 to 5 grind and you're staring at some drab grey walls in a cubicle and dreaming of the day you might be able to set yourself up and actually work on your own time. Or maybe you're a working mother and you're only getting to spend a couple of hours a day with your child because your job not only takes but actually demands the majority of your time. Or maybe you're a mother who hasn't yet returned to work because I can't believe it. Sorry, the, um, it's the, the, the presentation is not um, scrolling through. Can you just... Oh, no. If you're having problems, don't worry, I can load up on my screen and I can scroll through for you. Okay, let me know if it is now scrolling. No, can't see it. You can't see it? You can't see the screen at all? So, uh, do you want me to load up on mine? Maybe that will be easier. Um, you can see my screen though, is that right? Okay, so I'm, I've got it on my screen now, if everyone can see that okay. Um, can you please let me know, if you just um, ask in the question thing everyone, if you can see, uh, can you see it now, if just let me know. Brilliant, Look, everyone can see it. So I'll scroll through, if you just let me know when you want me to scroll, it, scroll um, through and I'll scroll through the screen, the slides for you. Perfect. I'm, I'm sorry about the technical difficulty we've used ahead. There's always one, don't worry. <laughs> well, hopefully this will be the last one for the whole webinar. So uh, thank you, Hannah, for, for helping scroll through. And we are indeed on the correct slide now. Um, so I will give you a little nudge uh, when it's time to, to move over to the next slide. Um, so as I was saying, you know, there's, there's so many reasons, and there's hundreds of different reasons, um, people seek a, a remote and a flexible career. And each reason is actually unique to each person's specific needs. So I'd really love to hear some of your reasons for joining us today. Um, so if you get a chance, please share those in the, uh, in the questions, and then we can address some of them during the Q&A portion at the end. Um, so first of all now, you might be wondering, what kind of career actually allows me to have a real work-life balance? And that is indeed the topic we're going to be exploring today. So we can jump right in and go to the next slide. So, 
If you've never heard of a virtual assistant, here's the gist for you. Um, entrepreneurs, executives, small business owners, and people everywhere are constantly looking to scale their business and to grow their business, or they're seeking help to actually run their business day to day. And virtual assistants actually take the place of in-house employees and run the gamut of support from scheduling to marketing to product management to sales support. And the list actually goes on and on depending on your own field of experience. Um, VAs do all of this remotely through online tools and online communications. So it's a never an office-based role. And depending on your clients, some of the tools could include, for example, Dropbox, Google Drive, Gmail, Skype, Slack is very frequently used now. And it's an industry that in recent years has been absolutely booming. Now, if we go to the next slide, and you think that all sounds too good to be true, um, let's explore what it actually looks like um, from a day-to-day -day point of view. So I'd like you to meet our non-fictional character, Jenny. Jenny is actually a mum that has chosen to work for Worldwide 101 as a VA after leaving her career in marketing because she wanted to pursue a more remote option, an option that really worked within her lifestyle. So what Jenny does from day to day is grab some coffee in her kitchen and she starts her day at 8 a.m. in her home office. And just uh, as a side note, she definitely doesn't miss her old 45 minute commute uh, into the city, which I must admit, I don't miss myself either. <laughs> she has um, a client in London and he runs an e-commerce consulting firm. And today what he's looking for is some help in answering um, some of the client emails via template he's given her. He's looking for help with uh, research for villas for his upcoming trip to Italy. And he's also looking for help with uploading a few emails he's written into MailChimp. So she spends a few hours on these projects in the morning and then fills them in on her progress. Her next client is a woman in France. She owns a social media marketing company and needs her assistance scheduling some social media posts in Hootsuite and then sending a few invoices to her customers and also wants a call to discuss an upcoming webinar that Jenny will be running for her. Then her third client, based in Reading, all he needs Jenny to do today is to schedule a few meetings on his behalf and then research a hotel for his upcoming company conference. So after all of this, Jenny finishes her day at 2 p.m. just in time to do the school pickup run and then to have time to spend with her children and actually prepare for the next day. So this, of course, is just an example, but it is a real life example. Um, and depending on, on the VA's particular skills and schedule, um, your day might look a bit differently, but that's the beauty of working as a VA. It's very adaptable and you really have the flexibility to tailor your work to fit around your life and not the other way around. So let's have an, now that we've got an overview of life as a VA, let's go to the next slide and, um, and find out a little bit more about what you need to get started. So first of all, I think we should cover the basics, which is of course the skills you need to become a VA. So first of all, you will need to be extremely organized. Being a VA requires working with several different clients and it's so, so important that you're able to organize projects, communications with each client, and also your own time in order to get things done for your clients. You'll also need to be really, really proactive as a VA. Your clients are looking for a VA who can not only handle their tasks, but hopefully find them new and better ways of doing this as well. So it's really important to do as much research as possible on the best ways and the best online tools as well that you can use to complete certain projects and help bring ideas to your clients so that you actually then become an indispensable part of their team. And of course, it goes without saying that you need to master the skills that you're actually looking to offer the client. So for example, if you're looking to offer executive assistance or marketing or social media assistance, then those are skills you'll need to have. Um, and that goes for, for scheduling and bookkeeping and anything like that as well. And you'll want to make sure that you're familiar on all of the latest trends and the best practices in your area as well. So your clients can really be assured that you're the best person for the job and you build up a trusting long-term relationship with them. Okay, let's move on to the next slide, um, which is to do with your home office. So of course, working from home is wonderful. There's no commuting. There are no coworkers to interrupt your flow. There are no soggy sandwiches that you have to eat for lunch. Um, but as wonderful as it, as it is, and it really is wonderful, um, it can also be really challenging at times. And you really have to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success here. So ideally, if this is possible, 
you would want a dedicated room in your house that you can actually convert into a home office so that you have your own space. And this will also help you keep distance between your personal and your work life, particularly if you have children. And I'm sure everybody saw, I think it was about a month ago, the, uh, the funny clip of the chap doing a BBC interview when, when his children burst in. <laughs> I always think it's, uh, it can be helpful if you have a dedicated room so that you can explain to your children, you know, when, when mummy or daddy is in the office, um, he or she is actually working and really can't be disturbed unless it's urgent. So you have to set strict guidelines and rules, not only for yourself, but also for other family members that are living in your house as well. Now, if you don't have a dedicated home office, please don't despair. Um, not everybody can, and that's absolutely understandable. But if that's the case, find the space in the rooms that you do have available to you um, that really works for you. You know, maybe it's placing a desk in the corner of a room, or maybe it's actually, for some people, it's working at the kitchen table, or, you know, wherever it is you feel comfortable. But just make sure that this space feels like a good, productive workspace for you, and where you won't have constant distractions. So I would absolutely, um, <laughs> absolutely veer off, uh, you know, sitting on the sofa and, and having the TV on, because you do want to feel like you're at work and not like you're just lounging in your living room, if you like. Because it really takes a lot of motivation to keep focused when you're working at home, because you are working by yourself. So you need a space for yourself that reflects this. Now, the beauty of working from home is that you don't have to do the same thing every day. So you can absolutely switch it up. For me personally, I really like working from my local coffee shop in the morning. I find that that's really motivational. And then once I've had my fill of uh, all of the noise and outside conversation, then I come home and I work from my home office in the afternoon. But make sure that you explore your local area. And you can really find what works for you. And for some work, for some other people, it might be, you know, going to a local co-working space or, um, you know, becoming part of a business community in your local area. But the most important thing with your home office to remember is that you will need a computer with the latest operating system and a really, really strong internet connection. If you can invest in fiber, if that's available in your area, do so. And then if you plan to work outside your house, just make sure that you've chosen a location with a really strong Wi-Fi connection. And at this point, it's worth mentioning that some public Wi-Fi connections are not private, and you'll be working on some private client files. So just make sure that you have any antivirus software and any other protections that you need installed on your computer, and because you will be dealing with confidential information. OK, let's move on to the next slide. So this all sounds truly well and good. You have the skills you need. You have your home office set up. Now, how do you actually get started? Well, some of you might have heard of a recent study by Intuit that actually claims that 40%, 40% of the workforce will be freelance by 2020, which is absolutely staggering. And you know, maybe you've already thought about freelancing, or maybe you have no idea what it truly means. But freelancing in general is a really, really good opportunity for people with marketable skills to become entrepreneurs and really become in charge of your own schedule, your own rates, and your own hours, most importantly. So what you're doing essentially is starting an independent business, and you have to make sure that this business is legally set up to run. So I would recommend at this point it's best to consult your own government website, depending on, on where you're based in the world, um, and find out what exactly the requirements are to set yourself up, and it will vary from country to country. I know that in the UK, for example, which is where I am, um, the, uh, the government website has a really great step-by-step -step process that teaches you exactly what it is you need to do. Now, I know this might seem daunting, but once you've completed the initial setup process, there's actually a wealth of resources out there to help you. FreshBooks, to mention one of many, for example, is a, a really great accounting software for small businesses that will help you actually stay organized and keep on track of your expenditure, your income, and your taxes. But overall, it's your local community that will be able to, to tell you more about your tax requirements and also how to file your taxes independently. Please don't let the term freelancer um, let it shy you away from looking into virtual assistants. It can be much easier to transition than you think. And actually, I think people um, get very scared when they think about, uh, about submitting their own taxes. But actually, you'll find that there's a lot of support available out there to you. Now, what else do you need to get started? Let's move on to the next slide, which is your website. So like any professional business, what you will need to do is to create a website for your services. Um, and this really is essential. But 
whilst this might have been hard a few years ago, it's actually really easy nowadays to have a simple, good-looking website. Um, I would recommend you have a look at Squarespace or maybe Wix, um, which require absolutely no coding experience and produce some really, really brilliant sites. With this, you want to make sure that your, ref your website really reflects who you are as a person, and um, so what type of assistance you'll be offering. And that it, it will also help um, resonate with the clients that you're looking to attract. So if you're looking to offer predominantly marketing support, maybe what you want to do is uh, have a website that looks, you know, a little bit quirkier than if you're offering, for example, executive admin assistance to executives. So you want to make sure that it really reflects your business, your niche, and also your personality. Then moving on to social media, which is the next slide along. Now, we all know that social media nowadays is key but it can also be really, really overwhelming, actually. So you're probably thinking, okay, great, I, I have my business set up, now I have to use Facebook, I have to use Twitter, I have to use Instagram, I have to use all of the resources available to me. Now, the thing to bear in mind here is that it can take a lot of time to plan out posts for so, so many different networks, and then also to ensure that you know, your followers are staying engaged and you're achieving the goal that you want social media to achieve. You have to remember that in most, uh, in most larger companies, this is actually somebody's full-time job. Um, and this isn't your full-time job in this case. So what my recommendation is here, uh, once you get started, instead of spreading yourself too thin, think about where your clients um, are looking. And think about where they spend their time at the moment. And then focus your efforts on that network initially. If you think that the clients you're looking for are spending more time on Facebook, then for example, pick Facebook and focus all of your efforts on creating your own brand feel for your Facebook page. Then as you build up followers and as you build up more clients, then you can of course start exploring different networks, but don't spread yourself too thin initially. Now, there is one exception to this rule, and that is LinkedIn. Because you're running a professional business, you want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is up to date and it has a recent, professional, good-looking photo of you. I know that you can find a wealth of information on uh, the Talented Ladies Club website, and I think there was a webinar run recently as well, um, around all around LinkedIn. So if you do want to find out more about that, please take a look at the, uh, at the webinar. Now, moving on to sales and marketing, which is our next slide along. Now, I know not everybody loves sales, um, and some people are, of course, better at sales than others, but it is a necessary part of actually running your own company. So, First of all, think about what makes you unique. You know, there are other VA businesses out there. What's really going to set you apart from other virtual assistants? Do you maybe have experience in a particular area? Do you have a particular niche that maybe other VAs don't yet cover? Or do you want to focus on a particular industry? As maybe some of the work that you've done um, beforehand, is that going to be relevant to a particular industry that you want to focus on? Maybe it's an industry you already have some contacts in that you want to focus on as well so that you're able to get started and off the ground a little bit quicker. Now, whichever, whichever one of these you're, you're going to look to do, I would suggest creating a short elevator pitch for your business. Um, if you don't, haven't yet heard of an elevator pitch, it's a pitch that you would use if you were stuck in an elevator with somebody going from the ground floor to call it the 10th floor. And the person you're in the elevator with asks you, oh, right, nice to meet you. What do you do? So it's really a, a couple of minutes at most. And then this pitch is something that you can use at networking events or even when you're out and about and anybody at all asks you what it is that you do. So start getting really, really comfortable with that pitch. Use it over and over. Tell your friends, your family, get some feedback from them as well so that you really have it per perfect. Um, by the time you start using this client. And then next you want to decide what your ideal client actually looks like. So are you looking, still on the previous slide, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Are you looking to build up long-term partnerships or would you prefer to work on a task basis? So again, whatever the, the answer to the above is, the next step is going to be, I'm sure you can tell, it's going to be networking. So tell everybody you know about your business um, ask your friends for referrals, ask your family for referrals, attend business events and networking events in your local community, and generally really help to get the word out there about your business. You are the best promotional engine for your company. 
Now, I know this can probably seem daunting at first, and this is not everybody's favorite part of, of what they do, but I promise you that over time, you'll start feeling more and more confident talking about your business. Um, and the passion that you have for your business will really, really start to show, and that will help sell your skills to a wider audience. Okay, moving on to the next slide. We've got a lot of free online resources, and this is one of many. Um, but there is really a wealth of free online resources to help you get started. Many virtual assistants have already faced the challenges you're facing and are then happy to share their knowledge and their insights with you. So if you'd like to check out We Are Virtual Assistants, which is a free community, and you can there find more information about the ins and outs of getting set up and explore some free online training programs. These are great if you want to um, have a, a, a bit of training in a particular um, a particular system that maybe you haven't used before. So if you feel like you need additional training in, say, Excel, it's really good for that. If you need some additional training in how to best use Outlook, there's a lot of free training programs out there that I would really say you should take advantage of. And then you can also find some advice from real top industry coaches on there. So you'll feel like you have, a, you have the knowledge to actually then be able to move forward. Now, let's move on to a, a different question. We've got the question of uh, independent or agency, which is on our next slide. So what we've talked about so far is actually setting yourself up as an independent virtual assistant. But there is an alternative out there that you might want to consider that I wanted to tell you about as well. And this is the world of working for a virtual assistant company. So you might be wondering, OK, well, how exactly does that work? How is that different from uh, me setting myself up as a virtual assistant myself. Well, on the next slide, you'll be able to see that here at, um, at Worldwide 101, um, we have uh, executives, we have small business owners, we have entrepreneurs, and these guys are constantly getting in touch with us, seeking help in different areas. So we have a team of talented, dedicated professionals with strengths in different areas, from sales to marketing to project management to administrative assistance. And we actually go ahead and hand match our clients to the virtual assistants on our team that best fits their needs but also their interests so we want to make sure that their interests are covered too. We then set up an initial meeting with our client with that client and the VA has the option to choose whether whether or not she actually wants to go ahead and work with that client and if she doesn't want to that's not a problem we move on and we find them another client. If on the other hand they do then the VA and the client get started working together and we move completely out of the way. All we do is provide support when needed. So whilst our whole team actually works remotely, you're never alone, which is brilliant. Um, we have an open door policy and then an active support team. So if you have any challenges that you encounter in your work with your clients, um, if it's, for example, technical assistance you need, any situation that you can't solve by yourself, we're actually here to support you. Another benefit here with the agency side is that you still get to set your own, your own schedules um, based on your needs and also, of course, the needs of the client. So whilst we do require our VAs to be available for at least 20 hours a week, they can then add hours as they see fit. So a lot of people who actually uh, submit an application to us will wonder, oh, but will I actually be able to get enough hours? And I can assure you, um, because our service is in very high demand, our VAs fill up really, really quickly. Our clients will go ahead and agree to a certain block of hours per month. So the VA can then plan her schedule around uh, that client and around timing with other clients as well, because typically you'll, you'll be working with more than one client. And the great thing is that most of our clients actually stay with us long term, which is great for our VAs because it gives you um, a little bit of consistency and an insight into what your steady income will be. So the pay varies between sort of 16 to 18 pounds an hour, depending on experience. And so it makes it really easy for team members to calculate your earnings in advance and to actually be able to budget and, um, and make sure that that's going to work for you. So really, it's as simple as that. And if we go over to the next slide, um, the one after that, you will be able to, uh, to see that we've put together a little freebie for you. It's just on the next slide along, Hannah. And um, we've put together a, oh, keep going. <laughs> So we've put together a, a brilliant little ebook for you um, with a lot of the things that we have discussed today, but also some additional resources that will help you get started. 
and Hannah will be sending this through um, after the webinar, I'm sure, with the, the follow-up email. So if you'd like to go ahead and download that, I think it'll be a really, really useful resource to, to get started. And then if you, uh, if you are interested in working on the agency side of things, um, please take a look at our jobs page. We are currently recruiting for virtual assistants. So if that's something that you think might be of interest to you, um, have a look at our jobs page for, for a little bit more information. Now, I'm sure that uh, we've only covered, you know, um, a bit of a, of a very wide area. So I would love to hear some of the questions you have and, and answer those for you. Thank you, Ekaterina. That was, that was um, very informative. Um, I've got a couple of questions already. If anyone has got any questions they'd like to put to Ekaterina about being a VA, please do ask them. Um, but Susan says, is working as a VA lonely? Ah, that's a really, really good question, actually. Um, well, first of all, no, it's not lonely at all. Um, there are a few things you have to remember. So if you're working independently, I would suggest that you do have to be really proactive. So be proactive in meeting team members in your local community. You know, join business groups, join networking groups, um, get out there and make sure that even though you're working for yourself, by yourself, um, you actually reach out to the community around you. If you're working for a, a premium agency like Worldwide 101, then you've got the rest of the team behind you as well that you can fall back on if you have any questions, as I said. If you have any technical questions or anything like that, you have the opportunity to, to fall back on other people. And there are a wide number of resources online as well. And there are a lot of VA networking groups, and there are VA's Twitter hours. So there's a lot of different uh, communities that you can get involved in, and you never have to be alone. And the other thing I, I, I have to say is that if you have a pet, this is brilliant because you get to spend a lot more time with your pet as well, and you'll never be lonely then. Brilliant. <laughs> Um, I've got three cats, so I'm definitely never lonely when I'm at home. <laughs> I'm always around. Um, Sue's got a good question. Sue says, how much are the setup costs? Mm -hmm. So that will vary from, from country to country. I, I'm not sure where you're based, but um, in the UK, for example, we have one of the, the cheapest setup costs if you want to actually um, set up your own business. Um, so you can do that very quickly and very easily online. The other set of costs you want to consider are a laptop if you don't own one yet. So you want to make sure you have a, uh, a laptop with the latest software on it um, and all of the antivirus, etc. that you have on there. Um, and then the internet connection that you will have to, to pay for but you probably already have in your home. Um, and any of, uh, of the marketing initiatives you do if you want to go ahead and, and pay for some of that marketing. There's a set of costs there. But apart from that, that's really it. The setup costs, that's the beauty of working as a VA. Um, the, the essential things you need are a laptop with a good internet connection and a phone number. Okay, brilliant. Most of us have that. Um, Christina says, I'm very interested in agency work. What is your basic requirements of a VA? Mm -hmm. So the basic requirements for us is uh, seven years of experience in your chosen field. So that doesn't have to be, um, as an executive assistant, maybe you've worked in marketing before, in project management, whatever your, your chosen field is, and um, seven years of expertise in that. Um, we also need you to be available for 20 hours a week as a minimum. Um, so that's 20 hours over the course of the week. Um, and then we also look for people who are, of course, going to be um, have excellent references and be happy, proactive, um, and friendly so they can work with our clients. But those are the, the basic requirements that we look for. Okay, fantastic. Um, if you have any, if you've got any more questions on that, Christina, please do feel free to ask if that if you need to know any more. Um, okay. And I would point you towards our uh, our jobs page on our website as well. Please take a look. Um, we would absolutely love to hear from you if you think this might be appropriate. Okay, brilliant. Kate says, do you have to live close to your client or be prepared to travel to meet them? No. Um, you don't have to live close to your client or be prepared to travel at all. So the beauty of the virtual assistant world is that you are 100% remote. Um, for us, all of our assistants are 100% remote and are never required to um, do any travel to meet with their client. Um, funnily enough, some of our assistants have uh, never seen their client face to face because they like communicating um, via email or via Slack or other messaging platforms. So you can do this job and rest assured that you, there is absolutely no need to have to, to travel to meet your clients at any point. Okay, brilliant. And Rebecca asks, I don't know whether maybe sometimes they may want to meet them, so do you ever get the opportunity to meet them? 
um, if you want to meet them, of course, and if, for example, your client happens to be traveling to your area, um, then, you know, there is no reason not to meet for a coffee, but it's not something that you should feel obliged to do because what you're offering is a virtual service. And your client could be based anywhere. So you could be, um, you know, based in, in London and your client could be in Glasgow, for example, or in Dublin. So there might not be any opportunities to meet up with them. Um, you know, if, uh, if it does arise and that's something that you'd like to do and you feel comfortable doing, then yes, absolutely, that's not a problem. But um, there should never be a feeling of, of feeling obliged to actually go and see that client. Um, and, and actually, Rebecca says that she um, has two children and is looking for a job that doesn't require commuting. So that sounds like it, um, it might be a quite good fit for, for Rebecca. Um, yes, if, so I've, got more, I've got one more question to ask. If anyone's got any more, please do feel free to ask. Um, while we've got Ekaterina not here live with us. Um, but Sally emailed me before and she said, uh, ask, what is the benefit of working for an agency over doing it myself? So why would I go via an agency? Mm -hmm. So there's a few different things to, to think about here. Um, if you're working for an agency, a lot of the things that we talked about initially in the webinar fall away. So you won't have to do any of your own marketing or your own sales or anything like that. You actually have a company behind you that already does that. At, um, at Worldwide 101, we have a wonderful team and we have clients knocking on our door every day who are looking for virtual assistants. So you won't have any of the, uh, the initial stress and setup of actually managing that side of your business. And if that's not really what you want to focus on and what you want to focus on is uh, the time that you're spending with your clients and actually earning money. Um, because whilst you're setting up, the, uh, the challenge is that you know, you're doing a lot of marketing, you're doing a lot of outreach, but you're not getting paid because you only get paid for the time that you're actually performing tasks for that client. Um, so I think that's a, a huge benefit. Um, and whilst you know, it's not guaranteed hours, um, you can expect to work uh, a certain number of hours per week and you have a realistic expectation of what your monthly, weekly, monthly salary will be. That's one of the, um, I used to be a freelancer, and that's one of the, the, the worst things about freelancers, you just never know when the money comes in, and then you spend your time checking payments from people who paid you, so yes, yeah. all of that just disappears. Exactly, um, and if you, um, if you have, for example, any, um, any issues with a client, you also, again, have somebody to fall back on and, and discuss that with, you know, if there's any issues with your client at all, um, you can rest assured that, you know, we will help you. To, uh, to mitigate those issues or find you a different client if it's really you know a fit that doesn't work because sometimes that happens as well um, not not every every uh, partnership works out perfectly but, um, uh, Kate asks do you have to pay any fees to the agency or are these covered by the clients no so there's no fees that you have to pay for the agency so the, uh, the amount of money you're earning so in pounds it's between 15 and 18 pounds an hour and um, that is the money that you will be taking home. Of course, you'll have to be, to be um, looking into your own taxes, so how you'll be paying your own taxes. But no, there are absolutely no fees whatsoever um, that you'll be paying. And if there are any fees, and that's something you come across, then I would be very, very weary of that because it might be, um, it might be a scam. Okay. Um, Sue asks, can you start as agency work and then when you have confidence, move to freelance and can you do both at the same time? So you can do both at the same time. Um, occasionally that works, but bearing in mind that um, we do require you to work for, for 20 hours a week as a minimum. Um, if you then have you know, another client of your own on top of that, occasionally that works, but sometimes you might find that um, you're so busy with the agency work that actually you might not uh, not have time to, to focus on, on finding other clients for you, or you know, more importantly, you might not want to. Um, so occasionally it can work in parallel. Uh, it depends on how many hours you have available a week and, and how that works with your lifestyle. Um, for us, as long as you're able to dedicate that minimum number of hours to us and do that during business hours, then there's no reason you couldn't also have another private client as well. Okay. Great. Um, Rebecca asks, if you sign up for Worldwide One, oh, so yeah, same question. If you sign up for Worldwide One and One, can you also have your own clients as well? Um, Christina asks, again, same question. This is to be a popular question. Uh, and Lucy asks, um, how much do the agency pay per hour? So it's between sixteen and eighteen pounds, and that really depends on your experience. 
it depends on the, the entry level that you have there. Um, if you have you know a lot of previous experience in uh, in the executive admin, or you've worked maybe as a VA before, or something like that, then the pay will really really depend on that. But that's a general rate. Uh, Kate asks, is it difficult to get a first client if you don't necessarily have experience but have done some training courses? I'm wondering if you if you mean that within the agency context or the yeah. um, independent can you, context. Can you tell me more? Clarify, Kate. Can you ask? Can you just let us know if you if that's um, going freelance on your own or is that via the uh, in the agency? Kate asks. In the agency, is it hard to find your first client? Um, no, it's not, um, because once you've um, once you've actually gone through all of the interview process uh, with Worldwide 101 will know you very well and will know where your skills and your experience lies. Um, and then we'll find one of our a client that is looking exactly for that. Um, so it's, uh, it's never a challenge finding, finding your first client. You'll find your feet. It might be, take a little bit of time for you to find your feet working with them because every person's different. Um, but that's the case with all clients. Even experienced VAs, you know, when they get a new client, will take some time to find their feet. Brilliant. Um, if anyone's got any more questions, please do ask now. Uh, just checking. Um, if not, thank you. Is there anything else you, you'd like to add, Ekaterina? Um, no, nothing else to add for me. Um, thank you so, so much for, for having me. Um, do take a look at the ebook that we put together for you guys. Um, I think that will be really useful. Um, to, I'll send a link out with the recording. Um, and actually, you're also on Twitter. Can anyone, could people contact you on Twitter if they wanted to yeah. ask you there? What's your, what's your Twitter? It's ecat worldwide 101 I'll send that through to you as well, and then uh, maybe you can share that within the, the follow-up email as well. Really yeah, feel free to, to read more, ask any more questions you have. Okay, um, just a couple more. Rebecca asks, can you set your own hours? Yes, you can set your own hours, and that's the most wonderful thing about uh, working as a VA. You can set your hours to work around your childcare maybe or any other commitments that you have. Um, but remember that you do have to be available during business hours um, at some point because your clients will be looking for assistance during that time. So you can set your own hours and decide when you work within those parameters. And Kate asks, with the agency, what happens if you need time off? If you need time off, then you always, with all of your clients, you'll have a trained backup assistant who will be able to assist them. So if you're going on holiday, for example, um, there will be a trained backup that will take over your clients whilst you're away. And then when you come back, you will be back with your clients as normal. So the clients are always covered, but you're able to, to go and enjoy your summer holiday or, or whatever it is that you're looking to do. Brilliant. And Rebecca says, thank you very much. Um, oh, thank you, Rebecca. So yeah, so we'll, we'll send the recording out, we'll send a link to the freebie, um, I'll put Ekaterina's um, Twitter, a link to her Twitter account there, so if you did want to get in touch and ask any more questions, you can, Lucy says thank you very much as well. Um, thank you everyone for, for uh, yeah, Kate says thank you, and Christina, and she's, Christy, Christy says she'll be in touch. Um, oh, so really, really helpful. Um, I said, do ask Ekaterina any questions on Twitter, do download her freebie, and I will send this recording out as soon as I can. But thank you very much, everybody. Thank and you. Thank you so much.